if you're still walking, come back up. We're going to get started. So hello everyone, good afternoon, and welcome to the first Sky Talk of DAC 2017. My name is Sharon Hu, I'm the Vice uh, Chair of DAC this year, and today is my greatest pleasure to introduce our Sky Talk speaker, Professor Wei Xiaojun. And Professor Wei is the Dean of the Department of Microelectronics and Nanoelectronics at Tsinghua University in China. He, he's a member of National IC Industry Development Advisory Committee, Vice President of China Semiconductor Industry Association, and Fellow of Chinese Institute of Electronics. And Professor Wei has published uh, nearly uh, close to 200 papers and some books. And of course, his uh, achievement probably going to take me another 15 minutes to, to talk about it, so I'm not going to go that way. And also going to just want to highlight a couple of things. He actually works for Da Tang Telecom Technologies, and there he was a vice president, president, and CEO for a number of years. Another data point I thought is interesting to share with you is uh, I was told Professor Wei often give lectures to the high official, you know, Chinese government top officials in China. So I think it's really our pleasure and our honor, actually, to have the chance to hear him give us a short lecture today. And he will talk about China's IC industry today and tomorrow, and its influence on global design and design automation community. Let's welcome Professor Wei. Thank you, Tarong. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great honor uh, to give a uh, the Sky Talk here, the first time I give a talk. So if I have uh, some troubles, make some mistakes, uh, please uh, 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 give me uh, 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 some uh, 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 signals. So uh, my talk will concern to uh, China IC industry. Certainly you heard a lot of uh, noise in the recent days. Uh, so my talk will cover several topics uh, debates uh, about uh, Chinese ice industry and what happened today for China and uh, how the Chinese uh, uh, industries developed and uh, 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 what's the influence on the global uh, uh, community, extra and extra. As a very time limited, so I will go a little bit fast. Uh, you know, since recent days, there's a lot of noise uh, a lot about Chinese uh, ice industry. So since uh, uh, 2015, uh, the games, you know, the government authority uh, meetings uh, under the framework of WSC, World Sub Semiconductor Council, starting to discuss uh, uh, the topics about the regional stimulus, uh, how to uh, use uh, government force to support industry. And uh, last year, November, uh, U.S. China Economy and the Security uh, Advisory uh, Commission uh, Review Commission submits a report to the Congress to say the Congress should make a study authorize the CFIUS to bar the Chinese state-owned company to purchase U.S. companies. And uh, January 2017, this year. PCAS submitted the report to the President Obama just uh, one week before he left White House. And in this uh, report, he said uh, the Chinese industry started to stress the U.S. security, number of security. In the last month, the uh, Secretary of Commerce of the United States, Mr. Ross, said it will be threatened, uh, the U.S., uh, industry will be threatened by China, planned investment, extra, extra. So a lot of noise. And uh, the people will ask why there's so many noise today. The reason is three years ago, China 
announced a new policy called the National Ice Industry Development Outline. In this outline, they try to establish the National Ice Industry Fund and uh, to promote Chinese ice industry. Uh, his 1,000 billion RMB, that means so 160 billion dollars revenue by year 2020. And uh, they put a series of targets to arrive. So the main topics or arguments focus on two uh, uh, things. The first, should government support the ice industry? So there's two different ideas. First, the government should not be involved because semiconductor is a market-oriented industry. The government support uh, would be unfair and the government's money is always troublesome. Another idea is government may be involved because the global semiconductor market has never been a complete free market. The idea is the second one coming from the United States, the first one coming from other reasons. So this uh, totally reverse our mentalities. For the second questions, how can government support the IC industry? In these topics, few argument about that. The only thing is to say, everybody agree that we need to make government to deliver deferable trade policies and development and uh, to make the market-oriented principles and the strongly support the pre-competitive technology, research, and the development. So that's the background of the noise. I just want to know uh, why the people fear about that, fear about the booming of China uh, IC industry. I think uh, there are three points. One is uh, fear breaking the existing balance. Second, losing the uh, existing advantages they have. And the third one is uh, harming the vested interests. How to deal with that? So let's uh, have a look at the first, today's China IC industry. Well, the data show uh, China's IC industry developed so fast. Last year, we recorded a total revenue, something around 433 billion RMBs. And the growth rate was uh, 20%. If we calculate the growth rate, the compound average growth rate from 2004 to 2016, it's 18.9%. Uh, it's a very fast, compared to 3% per year globally. But be careful, this uh, number, 433 billion RMBs, dividing the three parts. One is fabulous, another one is uh, uh, packaging and the testing, and third one is manufacturing. So let's go one by one to see what exactly happened for the different uh, sectors. For the manufacturing, that's very interesting uh, number is uh, they recorded the highest growth rate last year, so 25.1% last year. So, you can see the CAGR uh, is 14% from 2008 to 2016. It's quite fast, it's quite fast. But unfortunately, if you take out the subsidiaries of foreign companies in China, you can see that the red part, the half of the top 10 manufacturing fat uh, sites in China takes only 32%. The most of the revenues contribute not by the domestic companies, but for the, by the foreign companies in China. So they made really the good uh, business. Another two problems is the process technology behind the, I mean, the international uh, 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 frontier two generations. Now China is only 28 nanometers, probably Scion, even not the high commuter gate, comparing to the 40 nanometers uh, TSMC or others. Second, the 300 millimeter wafer capacity is very limited. It's only 150 
1,000 uh, uh, wafer per month. Comparing to the requirement is 1 million wafers per month is needed. So only 15% required. Second one, for the fabulous, this is considered as the bright sport for China semiconductor industry. You can see last year it still records 24% growth. If you calculate the CAGR from 1999 to 2016, 70 years, this number is right, even higher than so 45%. That's really fast, really fast. It's not uh, 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 related to uh, the uh, manufacturing sectors. Most of them are foreign companies inside in China. Here, the most of uh, fabulous is in China. It's domestic one. The major uh, sites, uh, oops, here, it doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't work. In Shanghai, around Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, that's the major site. If I calculate the number of uh, 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 fabulous, it's uh, a lot. In total, it's uh, 1,362 fabulous companies today in China. A lot of flat. And uh, 161, just quite small part, takes the revenues 122 or 23 billion RMBs. 20% so of companies contribute 80% the revenues. For the others, it's not important, but we can see that the uh, gross margin is around 30%. It's quite low. Comparing to uh, the fabulous here, it's normally it's, uh, 55 to 60%. It's quite low here. For the packaging and the test sectors, it's still gross, but more smoothly. Last year, it recorded 12.3%. And from 2008 to 2016, during eight years, the CAGR is uh, uh, about 12.3%. So it's not bad. But if you look at the contributions, that's very interesting. Among the top 10 packaging and testing companies, four are domestic one. They contribute 61% uh, the revenues, but the most of others, six one, coming from the foreign companies in China. So, I would like to say, even we have a very impressive number, it's 433 billion RMBs revenue last year, but most of them, or for the manufacturing, or testing, the packaging, contribute not by the domestic one, but by the foreign companies in China. That's the second part. Third one, China has developed very fast, long time semiconductor industries. But why does them speed up the development today? Because there are some reasons. First, China is the one of the largest manufacturing sites in the world. Here's the several numbers to show that for the mobile phone, in 2009 is 47% but 2014 is 84%. If we look at the color TV, 2009, 45%, and 2014 is 60%, 66%. For the PC, it grows almost 26% during several years. So China is a big manufacturing uh, site. So we can say this is a world factory. So they need integrated circuit. That's the reason why we import so many integrated circuits from outside. Since 2013, you can find that the import in IC so value is surpassed 200 billion US dollars for consecutive four years. That means 60% integrated circuit manufactured worldwide have been imported to China, so to China. So China is a big buyer. That poses a, a lot of problems, worries. One side, Chinese started to worry about uh, the number of imports. They said one day if they don't, they don't sell again the products to us, what we can do. For our customers, oh, um, suppliers, 
I know a lot of uh, 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 big uh, players of IC. They worry also. They said, oh, you buy so many ICs from us. One day you stop to buy. What we can do? So you can see both parties are afraid of that. That's a big trouble for that. Okay. About the number of uh, integrated circuit imports, we know that more than $200 billion in IC has been imported. But I can say that two thirds of them has been re-exported outside because uh, uh, they go out with the uh, uh, electronic devices such as iPhone or others. So one third will stay within China. Actually, China has uh, consumed 27% uh, of uh, the ICs within China. That means uh, we don't risk export again in any, any matters. This number represents three, uh, 93 billion US dollars. So it's quite a lot of numbers. And uh, we want to know how many, uh, how, how many uh, domestic made products can be uh, 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 provided by, uh, uh, to compare these numbers. So this number, uh, this chart shows worldwide semiconductor revenue. Be careful here. It's uh, 338 billion US dollars. And here's a number by Chinese Fabulous. It's 164 billion RMBs. One dollar can change 6.8 uh, RMBs. So if we make a simple calculations, the domestic, domestic IC products takes only 7.3% of the total uh, market share. So we consume 27%, we provide 7%, so the still 20% should be rely on the importations. So that's the list about the products we import. And uh, you can find that for the computer, for the general purpose logic, even for the, for the storage uh, displays, even for the communication logics, a lot of them are zero. Zero, that means China should rely 100% from outside. So we said that's the real situation we have today. Here is another example to show you that China is on the lower end of the value chain. This uh, list of the cost for one famous mobile phone. You can find these two numbers here. Manufacturing cost how much? Four and a half dollars. And another dumb number here, five dollars. Box contents. That means the manufacturing even less than, smaller than the contents in the box. So we say the value of manufacturing is only 0.6%. It's too small. So everybody wants to make more money. They want to move up from low end to the high end. That's the main of the for driving force for, the, for China to, of course, to, 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 to develop their own manufacturing. Okay, how is China doing for his IC industry? First, it's money. We need the money. If we don't have money, we could do nothing. Here's the number of the worldwide semiconductor co uh, capital expense, blue one. So for a few years, it's less than $50 billion. The most time is more than $50 billion. The red lines here is Chinese investment. So from the 2001 to 2013, the lines are really on the bottom. We can say it's within the tolerance of the calculations. Even from the 2014, they raised a little bit. Last year, the total investment is around 10 or 11 billion dollars. It's the first time the investment is higher than 10 billion dollars. Of course, during this uh, uh, few years, we have uh, built some investment funds. Some of them from government, 10%. The most coming from the bank, from the investment, from the social companies, extra, etc. 
the number we accumulate uh, raised money is uh, not so bad. It's uh, 465 billion RMDs. In total, that means 68 billion US dollars. That's the number today we have. So with this number, we said it's not enough, but anyway, we can do something already. With this money, the most important issue is to build the FAB because the capacity is not enough. So we need to build the FAB. Here is the number of uh, wafers per month we have already. Here is the building, the, the, the capacity is building, 615,000 wafer per month. That's the capacity we are building. So if the compilation of all these FABs, the number of uh, capacity will grow to 1.1 billion wafers per month. That will fit our 50% of market share. So that's not bad, but it's not enough. Merge and acquisition. That's the third one. When to do, we involved ourselves in some merge and acquisition. The total money we spent is uh, 11 billion dollars during the last uh, three years. This is a good number, but comparing to the more than 100 billion dollars in the United States or worldwide, it's only several percent in one digit. The fourth one, we try to have more talents. We have money now, but uh, we don't think we have enough talents. So the education become a, a serious problem. So the government spend some money for the education, for microelectronics. We select nine universities that are qualified to build demonstrative institution of microelectronics. And another 17 universities is working hard towards be qualified in the next few years. The fifth one, what's the influence on global community? That's very important. The first, who is the biggest profiter from this Chinese booming? Semiconductor equipment manufacturers, right? So you can see that last year it grows 31%, largest one. So if you look at uh, see, uh, look at the manufacture of equipment. They come to China very often, every month, uh, try to visit all these potential uh, fabs. Second, materials. Materials is also important. You can see that last year we recorded a very high data, is 7.4% increase. In total market share is 15%. So make some uh, calculations. If all these 615 kilo uh, a thousand wafers per month capacity is on place, you can find that 42 billion dollars will be spent for uh, equipment. That means all this money will go to the manufacture of equipment. And each year, they have to 2.5 billion US dollars will go to materials. So that means the booming of China will contribute to the equipment and materials in uh, very important manners. And also, you can see everybody try to find the opportunities. So there's a lot of fab. You can find the international partners here. They always try to find some opportunities to profit from these national outlines to get money to get support, power, power chip, UMC, Intel, Global Foundries, TSMC, Samsung, Hynix. It covers almost all the big players. So why they, they go to China? Because market is there, because there are some good environments, there are good co opportunities for them. And uh, in terms of products, you can find also the power from IBM, the x86 from AMD, x86 from Intel, Qualcomm, all of them try to build some collaborations with Chinese partners because uh, there's more, more easy way to penetrate this market 
especially for some government purchase market. That's the Chinese map. And I list the average GP, GDP per person for each provinces. They can be divided in three parts. For East Coast, normally it's red, more than 10,000 US dollars. In the middle, it's blue, more than $6,000 per person, but less than 10,000. And uh, this uh, yellow one is on the west part. That means China is a huge country. So development of economy from the east to the west is not, is not balanced. That means the products cannot be sold in the east part. Maybe they have the chance in the middle or in the west part. So don't think the products uh, here, if you don't have any uh, market, there's no market in China. Normally you can find some opportunities on the west part. That's very interesting for that. For the EDA tools, I told you, we have 1,300, more than 1,300 fabulous. You can see, in terms of revenue, more than 700 of them was the very small revenue, less than 10 million RMBs. That means 1.6 billion uh, million US dollars. Only 12% of them is higher, more than 100 million uh, RMBs. If you look at the number of employees, only 1% companies with 1,000 more than 1,000 employees. And for almost 90% of the companies, they in high less than 100 employees. Okay, that's quite easy to understand. Most of our fabulous companies, they are small, micro companies. They don't have enough money to pay your very expensive EDA tools. So how can we do that? So try to do something to adapt the requirement. I think a few people uh, can buy synopsis or cadence today. You just take some big car giants. For the rest, I mean 90% of these small companies, you lose that. Or you can collaborate with some Chinese EDA vendors, try to find something. For others, because of so many small companies, they have no ideas to spend the money for develop the big, big, the, the complicated chip. For example, the use of 40 nanometer technologies. So we try to develop some uh, technologies such as we call this reconfigure computing. Try to use uh, the software defined chip SDC to make the chip can be used in many applications. In that way, so we can enlarge the number of uh, chips, but it requires the architecture of the hardware to be dynamically changed according to the software. So from the C language compiler to use this so called reconfigure computing chip, here is the methodology of EDA. I think most of you understand that a lot of, of them related to the 10 years, 20 years ago, high level synthesis. But the difference is, is uh, coming from not for the chip, but for using a chip. That's the idea. And of course, another idea is to use this kind of technology to develop some uh, neural computing chip. Not neural computing itself, but using this technology to make an on-chip compiler, for example, to let the people to read the applications written by C and the compiled it automatically on the chip and applying that in the systems. About the design automation in China, we say, here are some guys from uh, 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 Huada uh, Electronics. It was found in 1986. They developed the first CAD tools called the Panda systems in 1989. But I think it's the wrong name because panda, panda is an uh, animal, you know that. Uh, it's not a total uh, veto. Uh, it should be 
uh, protects, uh, well take care, well cared by the people. So this products, uh, if not well protected, it will die. <laughs> so this wrong number. Today we call this uh, Amprian, this company, uh, domestic EDA tools company, same type is the result and work out some single points. And then we have uh, uh, some companies including Imprion, uh, Propass, Tsinghua University, or others so working on the, uh, this part. And the last year we formed uh, the China uh, Design Automation Expert Committee and uh, we organized the Future Chip 2016 in Tsinghua University. And then this year we will organize the meeting again. So here I, uh, in, on behalf of the organized committee, I invite all of you, if you have a chance to go to China, to participate in our uh, uh, meetings there. Finally, I want to say, today we have a strong debate, but you can understand China develop fast, but we are still weak. Uh, as we are a unique country, so we have a very special uh, demands. So if you want to be success in China, you need to make something uh, different to meet the special requirement of Chinese people. And uh, we said a rapid growing IC industry in China certainly will force the design and the EDA community to change. And uh, we are open, uh, we are not so strong, but we are open to work with you. And uh, since a uh, few years, uh, we uh, joined uh, the EDA, international EDA communities. Uh, a lot of my colleagues or friends today present here in DAC, and uh, we try to do something, to learn something, and to try to contribute something. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Wei. I think given the time, uh, we won't have time for questions, but Professor Wei is going to be around. Uh, you can you know, stop him, talk to him. I'm sure he'll have lots of, lots of answers for your questions. And also, I just want to put in another uh, advertisement, per se. Uh, we have a panel at 3.30 to 5 o'clock at Ballroom F that talks kind of further this topic, talk about the IC industry, the design industry in China, what it means to the whole global industry, and also in terms of opportunities and challenges. So you're all welcome to go to that session, continue the discussion, continue the debate, continue the excitement. Thank you so much. <laughs>